a thousand bucks a week tutoring on the side. Yeah. What's up, Nickel over here? Welcome to the Side Hustle Show because your earning power doesn't have to stop when your day job does. What if, what if there was a high earning side hustle that helps other people, that uses your brain, that you could do evenings and weekends and bonus points, you could do it from home? Well, tutoring may check all those boxes and we'll uh, learn about that today. Matt Fuentes from Take Aim Tutoring is here. He's a teacher by day. He's a sought after tutor after hours. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Nick. I am super pumped to be here. Love all your stuff. Love listening to you. Um, I just can't wait to share, to, to help out um, your amazing you know group that, that you've created. So I'm super pumped to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I appreciate you joining me, longtime member of the Side Hustle Nation community. Stick around nice. in this one to hear how Matt markets his business, how he prices the service, and how he's taken almost all of it remote from what was uh, previously almost an all you know, face-to-face, in-person business. Your listener-only bonus for this week is my big list of 101 service business ideas. You can start and use some of Matt's same tactics to get customers. You'll be able to download that for free at the show notes for this episode at sidehustlenation.com slash tutor, T-U-T-O-R, or just follow the show notes link in the episode description of your podcast app. But first, Matt, inquiring minds want to know, were you, did you end up acing these standardized tests as a kid? Like what, you know, what gave you the qualifications to become a tutor in the first place? Great. I, you know, it's funny. I never... Th- Parents and students never ask me that when they start working with me. They're always just like, we got your name. Can't wait to work with you. It's never just like, so what did you get so that we know <laughs> that this is good? Um, I will say this because the the scores were were different. They changed to like a 2400. Then they changed into um, the 1600 range. I did. I don't want to say the score because I don't want to say, oh, he did great. I did. I did very well. I didn't do really well, but I did well enough to, you know, kind of get into any school that I had applied to. Um, and I think it's important because, you know, I wasn't the best test taker when I was a student. Um, I really kind of hit my stride when I was getting, um, my, my undergrad and then my bachelor's, uh, and then my master's degree, two master's degrees. Um, that's when I kind of started clicking as, as a, as a student, but, uh, I did, I did, I did pretty well. Pretty well. Okay. Um, All right. But, but like I it's said, not something that parents are like testing you, which is interesting because I was like, eh, it's like, so like interesting. I've never been asked it once, and I've had you know uh, hundreds and hundreds of students, and, and never, never asked. Doesn't matter how amazing or how lousy of a test taker you are, you can teach yourself these skills to be an amazing tutor to students out there who are taking the ACT and SATs. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever see the uh, documentary on the college admissions scandal? Yes. Yes. And um, they talk about the guy who was like, t- you know, forging the tests mm-hmm. and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, have him branded as some like test taking savant. And they're yeah, like, well, and wait a minute. He's a grown up taking a test for teenagers. Of course he's doing okay. They're looking at his thing. You're not 16, sir. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that w- that was a real wake up call to a lot of parents where, you know, they realized that going to do as best as you can that that day. I'm here to teach you all those strategies, tips, tricks, but at the end of the day, you're the one taking the test. It's almost like when you take the driving test. You know, I can't be there with you. And I think this is a great thing, you know, for your viewers to realize is, you know, that kind of, you know, underpromise oversell. You know, where I tell, you know, my parents I'm very transparent with where I think their student can score and what ends up happening when you're very honest with parents and students, they almost want to use you more because they appreciate that honesty when you're working with them. Yeah. Now you've been doing this for a long time. What inspired you to get started as a tutor? I was working in New York City and I worked for a pretty, now the company is really big and I was a salesperson for that company. And I, uh, I got a commission check for about like $40,000. Um, I was like, yeah, I was like 20, 23. Um, and it was for that, it was a huge amount of money for a a kid my age. And I remember going home and with my wife at the time, we had just bought a house and and I put the check on the table, uh, and I started crying And, and I told my wife, I go, I've never been more unhappy in my life than I am right now. And from there, the next day, 
I went and I uh, applied to a local school, Malloy College, and I started to get my master's in education. Fast forward, became a teacher, uh, was working in New York City for the New York City uh, Department of Education, really cut my teeth as a teacher there. I was in Brooklyn. Okay. And we started a family and my wife was pregnant. She wanted to stay home. I needed to make more money because she was no longer going to bring in any income uh, she was a teacher as well. So I needed to think of an idea. What am I going to do to bring in an income on my end while still teaching? And I remember very well sitting in the classroom, writing down numbers of how much I needed to make a month, really just to make ends meet. And I thought of tutoring. Yeah, I remember you. So Matt wrote this guest post on Side Hustle Nation years ago, which is, had had a really long lifespan, a really long shelf life where it's got, you know, 150,000, 150,000 lifetime page views or something like it's done really well. And you mentioned that like, Hey, I'm, all of a sudden I've got these new baby expenses coming up. I got to figure out a way to make extra money uh, and tutoring, check that box. Like, hey, this is something that I enjoy doing. This is something that is in demand. This is something uh, that might be a side hustle fit for me, but, or there were, and there still are a lot of other people doing it. So what gave you the confidence to say like, okay, I can carve out a niche for myself or I can go and uh, and find some business here. When you start something, especially tutoring, um, whether you're a teacher or not, and you're out there working with other people, a big part of this is how you show yourself, how you interact with people. And I remember I went to a, I went to dinner one night with a bunch of friends and I had the idea of the tutoring business, but I was just thinking tutoring, right? And there was this couple that was there and they had an SAT tutoring business. They were lawyers and they quit their job and they just tutored on Sundays, SAT, and they made a ton of money. And I remember telling myself, like, why can't I do that? You know, I'm as intelligent as these people. If I put in the, the work, I really think I can build this. And I had the sales background already. So I said, you know what? I, I think I could make this into something special. And also, my feet were to the fire. You know, it was kind of like, I, I have to do this. So, you know, as the kind of the phrase goes, like necessity is the mother invention, like I just had to make this work. Yeah, we see yeah. it really on, on both sides of the spectrum. And we've joked about this uh, on the show in the past where, you know, some people are like, yeah, you know, price high from the beginning, you know, you want to hire me as a consultant? It's, you know, I'm going straight for the high ticket. It's $10,000. You know, engagement and other people where, you know, maybe the majority of side hustle nation falls and probably myself included in this bucket is kind of that imposter syndrome, like, oh, who am I charge for this kind of a thing and all that. But tell me about your, you know, from idea to first customer. Like, how did you get somebody on board? Do you remember this that first student to say yes or the first parent maybe to say yes to you? I actually remember I remember the first student. Um so we were, uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife was pregnant and I didn't know what to do. I got the SAT practice book, ACT practice book. I started practicing, taking tests, going through questions, writing out notes. Um, you know, it's called a side hustle cause it's a hustle. You know, I really put in the hours to get better and I started, and this is what I teach and tell other people who want to become tutors is I texted and emailed literally every single person that I knew. Um, I was coaching a sport at the time. And I remember being on the bus with my student, with the, the kids I was, were, I was coaching and I just had my phone out and I'm just texting everyone. Hey, it's Matt. I'm starting a tutoring business. If you or anyone that you know should have the need for tutoring any subject, let me know. I'm your guy. Here's my number. And so in your mind, you're saying, I want to I want to specialize in test prep, SAT, ACT. These are you know big college admissions tests. But in your initial marketing, it's like, if, I'm going to cast a much wider net. I want to do tutoring for any subject. Yeah. Money, money is green. So I okay. said, you know what? Whatever I can do, I'm going to do. Now, there was you know a level of hourly pay that I would require, but it was nothing like I do now. So it's a great point. At first, I just wanted to cast my net as wide as possible, kind of get going, and then keep building from there. So my first client was a student um, in a town, maybe like a half hour from where I lived. I would drive over there, work with the student. Um, it was for SAT prep, drive home. And in the beginning, I think I was making around... Um, 
I think it was like $60 an hour, but I was driving, you know, a half hour there, work for an hour, half hour back. But you know what? I said, Hey, I'm, I, they liked me. We were get we had a great relationship and I just started to tell myself that, Hey, this is the beginning. This is okay. This is how this is going to build. And not to your point saying, I have to have this. This is what it's going to be. And if it isn't that I give up, no, it started slowly and it just kept building from there. And I think that momentum and letting that momentum grow um, was super important for me. And I think important for anyone that is trying to start something from scratch, especially a side hustle. What was the reaction to your friends, family, coworkers on the receiving end of those tech messages? Hey, I'm starting a tutoring business. Super um, interested. Once again, you know, maybe some people were like, who is this? And I'm like, oh, it's, it's Matt Fuentes, you know, from, you know, school or whatever. And what I found, I think the most interesting part of that experiment, and, and, and like I say, when I work with other teachers to become tutors, I say this, you need to text every single person in your phone. And the reason is, is because what happened is even if it was someone that I didn't think had a need, they would get into a conversation eventually. And then all of a sudden I would get a call from someone who I do not know that got yeah. my name from someone that I was connected to. Fast forward to where I am now, you know, I'm getting calls from people that are, you know, fourth, fifth removed from clients or people that I, you know, texted, you know, seven, eight years ago. So they were very supportive and, and I was very surprised at the calls I was getting and making the connections. It wasn't that person. It was the person or persons that that person spoke to. Um, right. And I think that's Not a huge deal. Yeah, not necessarily trying to sell to your own network because like, yeah, they, they, may, they may not be a fit for it, but, mm -hmm. you know, down the road, you know, just trying to plant that seed, carve out that little, you know, exactly. space in their brain that, oh, Matt does tutoring now. And now Precisely. if you need a, a referral down the road. And whether it's a year, six months, two years, it's there, right? And that's that reoccurring business is that you, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's carving out that little thing. When you hear the, when they hear the word SAT, they think Matt. Nah. And yeah, that is that. where- yeah. Exactly. And that's where, you know, in the beginning, the business started to grow. Um, and it eventually got to a point. I had a couple kids I was working with and I moved from going to everyone's house. And I said, this isn't going to work. Like this is, it's too much time. I'm wasting too much time. Uh, I then started going to a local library uh, that was central to, to where oh, the okay. kids I was yeah, working you, with. You come to me. Sure. Yes. And they would meet me at, uh, at the library and then I would start, that's kind of like the second generation of the business is when I was working with students at the library um, and them just kind of coming in and out. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So it starts, you know, personal network, word of mouth. Is there any online presence at this point where people can, you know, check out who you are, like an online resume portfolio mm -hmm. type of thing? Are you collecting testimonials? What's going on uh, on the digital side, if anything? Nothing on the digital side at that, at that time. I think that speaks to the value of, you know, personal interaction with people still. So, you know, whatever that side hustle is that that person is starting, your biggest advocates are going to be the people that kind of know you already. And that can build that social equity where they're going to refer you out to um, other people that they know. Now from there, yeah, once you kind of get that book of business, at least for tutoring, then you can start going online and I created a website and you have the testimonials. But I think in the beginning, um, and once again, I'm kind of hitting at the tutoring aspect, in the beginning, utilize people who will be a mouthpiece for you because they already know who you are. So they're going to be able to, you know, give you that credit to other people that, that they know. So in the beginning, I did not have that. Um, that kind of grew naturally over time. Okay. Which is, uh, I'm, I'm sure a, a missed opportunity in some way, but also a testament to like, look, you don't need it. You don't need it when you get started. Like, don't overthink this stuff. Uh, like just go I out think and, uh, and find some customers. I think you, you made a good point. I think in looking back, it should have been both. 
you know, I should have kind of cast two lines out and let them both be there um, and then see, you know, what would happen. Because I look at my business now and, you know, my online approach is probably where my business went to like the next level, like really next leveled. Um, so yeah, probably in the beginning, I should have, like I, like you said, kind of cast those lines out and, and have the, that, that two-sided approach. Um, and that's probably something that I look back on and, and would have done differently. Sure. And did you ever mess around with any of the online tutoring matchmaking platforms like a um, uh, Wyzant or a tutors.com or anything like that? Yeah. So it's interesting. So I use them as kind of uh market research, right? So I would go on and sign up for these things and, 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 you know, and say like, Hey, I'm interested in being a tutor. This, yeah. this is who I am. Um, and they would reach out to me and they would say, Hey, this is what we're going to pay you. This is the clients that you can, that we can guarantee you. Um, at first it was a little tempting, right? I'm making a very low hourly rate, but they were guaranteeing me clients. So okay. I, took the, uh, I bet on myself and I said, you know what? I'd rather continue grinding on my own and making quadruple what they would give me and keep building that way than settling for, you know, working for someone else in that space. I'm not putting that space down at all, but for me, you know, I wanted to make a, a lot of money a month and and I just didn't see the path there. I saw the path more in building up this organic business. Um, but it was good to see, you know, what they charged, what were the materials they were using? How were they, how were they, um, you know, teaching? And from there, I also learned like they do group sessions. I never did group sessions. I like one-to-one because I can really give the client a personalized experience. And that has been a huge, um, I guess, kind of, part of my business that that's helped it grown because I can give that personalized approach. So I use those businesses as, you know, information. I, I, I wanted to get in there and, and look at them. Um, and then what I did is I, I took what I learned from them and then, you know, built my own, but I bet on myself really. Yeah. Talk to me about the decision to really niche down on SAT, ACT prep is like, you know, from the outside looking in, Hey, this is a, pretty evergreen type of topic. Like millions of kids are going to be taking this test every year. It makes sense. But like there was already a lot of, I don't know, it seemed like there was probably already an established industry supporting Mm. that, but to be able to come in, carve out a niche and say like, look, I'm going to go after this. Um, Especially because it's high stakes uh, testing. Like your parents really want their kids to do well on this Mm -hmm. to get into the top schools. I got into it because it was the most I can charge per hour. So I said to myself, and now I'll start getting into numbers because I think people will find that important and interesting. So I, I charge anywhere from ninety to a hundred dollars an hour per kid. Um, I don't move away from that. Why? If I'm charging less, then my value to those people might not be there. I already have the business. I have the kids. If you don't want to pay that much, no problem. But this is what I charge. If I charge more, which a lot of tutors do, there's no secret pill to scoring great on the test. The kid has to put the work in, you put the work in together. So that's kind of my sales pitch to the parents when I speak to them and students. I say, listen, I'm probably right in the middle, you know, 90, 100 an hour, but I'm not going to promise something that I can't back up. So that kind of knocks out the really expensive competition. So you're saying based on outside market research, these tests command the highest rates industry wide versus like, you know, middle school English or something. The, 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 perfect. Exactly. Because, okay. you know, I could teach a sixth grader social studies, but I'm not going to make $100 an hour. And there's part of me where I think of like lawyers, um, you know, uh, there's an arch- architecture test that's out there where they command, I mean, even more per hour, which is, which is phenomenal. I love it. And listen, there are tutors out there, SAT, AC tutors that charge more than me and, and have a great book of book of business, more power to them. But overall, these tests commanded the highest per hour base that, that I could charge for my time. And I think on the lower end, I also didn't undersell myself because I knew that my sessions were good. I was organized. Um, I knew what I was talking about. 
and I was learning. So I knew that I would provide them with a level of service that they would really appreciate. The last thing I'll get into is, like you said, it's a high stakes environment. You know, at the end of the day, the, the kid, the, the student needs to do well. Whenever I talk to a parent um, or student, I say, you know, my kids who score the highest, and this is true, are the ones that we meet every week. They do the work at home and they li listen to the strategies and tips that I give them. But at the end of the day, I can't be there with them when they take the test. They'll be ready. I track scores with my students over the weeks and months that we work together. So I know where they're at and I am extremely transparent with my students and parents. And 99.9% .9 of them love that. And when the score comes back, I mean, I wouldn't be in business if my kids' scores didn't go high, didn't go up. But sometimes, you know, it doesn't go up as much as they want. And that's okay because yeah. I've managed those expectations. Yeah. And this is an example of a really broad test that millions of people are taking. But as a business model in general to piggyback on the popularity of some test that you have already taken and passed and hopefully done well on, like that's across the board. We've seen lots of examples, even going back to like vintage Pat Flynn and like, I'll help you pass the lead exam in the architecture industry. That's, that, and it's that's, like, what, that's what I was, that was, that, that's what I was thinking about, uh, uh, Pat Flynn and, yeah. and, and looking at something. So, I mean, having that idea and then writing, I think he wrote a book or something like that about how to pass it. I mean, right. that's, his whole empire started from that. You know, and I think there's a lot of people out there who have a talent that can make them money. And as they grow and build from that, you know, especially with students, you know, parents are willing to, to help their kids. And if you can give them a great experience, even on a high stakes test, they're, they're, they're going to tell everyone they know to use you. Yeah. And if you're at a hundred bucks an hour and you're doing it week uh, after week, after week, after week, the, um, the customer lifetime value, and maybe they have got a sibling coming down a couple years later and, you know, they know somebody like the uh, customer value here is actually quite high. Even if you're like, point. well, I gotta go do, you know, a session for a hundred bucks. Like, ah, is that worth it? But like, no, you, you look at it, it's like, okay, this could be, you know, a $2,000 relationship. And that's why I'm, I'm so pumped to be on here is your listeners are thinking like that, right? Because I have students that I work with now. I worked with their sibling. I worked with their younger sibling. I worked with their cousin. I worked with their cousin's cousin. So yeah. that hundred dollar session will probably turn into two to 3000 over, over a span of a, of a client, but that relationship can be, you know, 10 times that. Um, I'll give you one quick note on that. I am purely referral based. I do not market at all anymore. Um, I have, my book of business is, is, is packed just from referrals. And, and what does that come from? From what we just talked about, right? Utilizing those experience with those students, giving them a great experience and then saying, hey, I really appreciate it. If anyone you know, please you know, send it out. It could be to your friends at school, your guidance counselor. So I have a college counselor and we can get into more in depth because I think this is the best way. If you're going to start a tutoring business, ACSD, this is the way to do it, is I have a college counselor that I cold called. He doesn't even know who I am. And I cold called him. We had a great conversation and he referred me a couple people. I did a great job with them. He now generates so many clients for me, this one person that I, I you could have a business just with, with this one person. So I wow. think there's tremendous value in really treating that experience that that student or parent has with you for that hour, for that 90 or hundred dollars and thinking, you know, this is going to be. 10, 20 fold in the future. Yeah, this is actually my brother's business. He's a full-time now freelance tutor as well. So I take a special interest in this. And one of the marketing tactics that he shared was um, going down the Costco route of giving people a free sample. Like, hey, look, I trust my, uh, I trust myself. I trust my service. I know it's high quality, but I, you don't know me, right? So like, hey, let it's me great. spend an hour with your kid. And because of that high customer lifetime value, totally worthwhile. And uh, 
Clo- I don't know what his you know, percentage close rate is on that. Um, I love this idea of going after the college counselors. Uh, we Ooh. would call this kind of a lead fountain strategy instead Mountain, of you know, knocking on ocean. doors one-to-one, uh, you know, like who who is going to be a source of a steady stream of potential leads of potential business, and this is an example of that. And there are probably millions across the country of people so kind many. of in, in the same position. I'm curious how you found this person. Was this a so, local college? How you connected with them? I, I I get like giddy when when I I, I think of this because <laughs> this is a I, I mean I don't know how not how easy it can be, but how you can build. I mean, there's someone probably listening to this and I want to almost like reach out of the computer and be like, you have no idea how quickly you can build a business tutoring for these tests by reaching out to these college counselors. So from a foundational level, there is a massive, massive business of college, uh, excuse me, guidance counselors who then become freelance college counselors. They meet with students and parents and devise a plan for them to get into certain colleges. They work on their own and they kind of like a a tutoring business. They have a a book of business of students they work with and they get them prepared for college essays, um, applications, uh, showing what jobs or volunteer opportunities you should do. And they advise them. So every single one of their clients is going to take the SAT or ACT. So you are not only calling someone who may, you have someone who absolutely has that need. There, there's, and there's it's not no cheap either, chance about right? It. Like these are pretty high ticket services, yeah? So expensive. So you're working with a group of potential clients who have the income to pay you $100 an hour and not think twice about it. So I can't think of a way to start or grow a business that is you know, just laid out in front of you. And when I work with um, teachers or people that want to be, you know, uh, tutors, SAT, AC tutors, I tell them, you know, listen, absolutely reach out to everyone, you know, email, everything. I think that's still very important, but you literally can just go on Google and type in, you know, college counselors in your area and it'll pop up, cold call these people. They are not the type of people where they don't get cold calls. So when you call them and say, Hey, my name's Matt Fuentes. I'm just letting you know I'm an SAT ACT tutor. I see you run, you know, uh, Nick Industries, and 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 you work with students who are applying to colleges. I really think what I can offer can help you with your business. Like you said, with what your brother does, I say if we can do maybe a 10 minute Zoom, I can show you how I run my sessions and I can show you what I do. And 90 percent of them say sure, let's do it. And then boom, there's that revenue stream that starts just from like you said this fountain of of potential clients it, it's amazing yeah trying to yeah, become I, a strategic referral partner or almost like a preferred vendor like you would have at a, a wedding yeah. venue or something like that and um, i think what to get into the nitty-gritty of it you know when i develop a relationship with these counselors what i will do is i'll tell them like listen this is what i charge i will give your client a break on the hourly charge so let's say i'm at 100 i'll go down to 90. Great. Oh, okay. And then I'll say, I'll make room for your client to, you know, be ahead in, in regards to my booking. So like right now it's almost, you know, it's the holidays, um, starting January one, I will get tremendously busy. College counselors are now calling me saying, Hey, I have these kids coming in. What can you do for me? How can you help me? So it's great. It, it's, it's a, an amazing way, um, to really jumpstart your business. And I think it goes back to that initial question you asked of, you know, where were you on that digital, um, you know, on the internet, where was your presence? Looking back, if I had just dove right into that, it, it, it the business would have grown a lot faster. Are you primarily targeting, you said people who are local or you could, you could theoretically do this nationwide? I think after COVID, what we learned is Zoom, Zoom is my best friend. You know, before COVID, I was I was in New York, um, and then my family and I we had, we moved to Charleston, South Carolina, where we live now. And a hundred percent of my business was all in person. By that time, I had an office that I worked out of, and all the students would come to my office and work that way. So I moved, and I remember thinking to myself, "All right, I'm going to work with students via Zoom." I looked up how Khan Academy did their tutoring and got the software that Sal Khan uses and purchased everything. 
And I started practicing how to do these Zoom sessions. And when I moved, I would say, I thought to myself, if I can have 50% of my clients sign up for Zoom, right? I'm in South Carolina, they're in New York. Yeah. If 50% of them say this works, I'm happy. 100% of them. They loved it. The student can work from home. Mom doesn't have to drive. The student's not driving at night. Right. We can set up any time. And then COVID hit, forget it. It was 100% of my business is now via Zoom. And to yeah. go back to when you're calling college counselors, you could call college counselors all over the country. Because now if you're tutoring via Zoom and working in a way where you know the student can log in anywhere, the sky's the limit, literally. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I'd, I'd love the strategy of reaching out to, uh, in not just tutoring, but really in any business, trying to figure out who your target customers are already doing business with in some way, shape, or form, and who is not competitive to you, but it's a complimentary service. And like, mm. okay, you're trying to get on those people's radars, just like you mentioned. Sometimes it's a cold call. Sometimes it's showing up to their networking meeting. So, you know, whatever it is, just like getting on their radar and becoming that preferred vendor, that, you know, preferred referral source. Um, in the article that you wrote, you had another cool strategy back when the business was all local. And this was kind of hosting the local expert workshop on like, hey, yeah. the ACT is changing. Here are, you know, the top five things you need to know to set your student up for success at the local yeah. coffee shop, the local library. I thought this was a really genius kind of like grassroots local marketing effort. Yeah. Uh, so the... <laughs> I love coffee. So uh, in, in where I was in New York, uh, a coffee shop had opened and I loved going there. And I remember saying to myself, they would have these like meetups for uh, you know poetry or musicians. I said, you know what? Let me, let me throw this out there and like see what, if, if, if it'll stick. So I was tutoring at the, out of the library then. And I thought to myself, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to email my current clients and say, hey, if you have a parent of a friend of yours who has a student who is getting ready for these tests, this is how they're changing. Come down to the to the shop. Coffee's on me. And we can just talk. And that's why I used to call it like, let's talk. And we can just talk and 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 go into what are the changes. And it's a net, it's really a networking event. I also reached out to guidance counselors within a like 10, 15 mile radius. And sent an email out saying, hey, this is what I'm having. If you want to come down, great. Um, and people would come down. And really what it would become is we would talk about the changes in the test. But really what a lot of these parents wanted was to how to navigate this whole situation. And to talk about building business in the beginning by offering a free service, that's, that's really kind of what I did. And it gets your face out to these people. You know, they, they realize that you're, you're a normal person. Um, you're good at what you do. And that, that helped in the beginning. I think it's still valuable now um, from a local sense. Um, but I would challenge your listeners or anyone who would want to start this. How could you do that on a digital space, right? Is it a meetup on Zoom? What a Google Hangout? Um, there's yeah. ways to do this. and you know, really get your name out there. Yeah. Hosting the free, uh, you know, online workshop and it doesn't have to be, there doesn't have to be any sales pitch at all. Cause you're just kind of like teaching, you're leading with value. And when the time comes to eventually work with a tutor, who, who are they going to call? You know, the guy who helped them out, who, you know, put themselves out there in a free, helpful way. It makes a lot of sense. I would recommend checking out episode 465. This is with Dustin Lean, who kind of growth, growth hacked his uh, marketing service similarly through these you know, partner workshops. Who are my customers already doing business with? Well, they're in e-commerce and they're you know, often using these you know, 10 software tools. How do I get on their radar in a hurry? How do I build my own email list in a hurry? I'm going to go out and host these educational workshops and showcase my expertise um, you know, one to many and then ended up getting uh, hired in a lot of those cases uh, by the attendees of those workshops. <laughs> here's the, here's the um, you know, uh, DIY version. If you want some help along the way, if you want the done for you version, uh, you know, I'm available, click here and, uh, and we'll set up a meeting. Uh, so definitely love that. I wanted to ask about 
you know, what does the future hold for Matt and Take Aim Tutoring? And I'm thinking about opportunities to scale here because inevitably the pushback is like, hey, hundred bucks an hour sounds great, but it's still time for money. Like, well, totally. where else are you going to make a hundred bucks an hour? Like, it's still, it's pretty good. Um, but you mentioned, hey, you know, one of the selling points is it's one-to-one. It's not one-to-many, mm-hmm. which is one of the uh, scaling opportunities that uh, other people in similar services would go down. Or you mentioned the, you know, I could scale my rates even higher, but like at a certain point, I can't really promise, you know, I can't promise double the results. So it doesn't necessarily make sense to double the rates. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. How else do you think about scaling in the future or what's on your radar there? I, th- I think you you found me in a place where um, th- that's a conversation I'm having with myself all the time. I've tried many ideas and they failed and that's okay, right? Because it's not failing until you give up, right? You're just, you're just you're just trying different things. What I'm trying to do is create um, these online courses, modules, things like that that I can offer to college counselors, that I can offer to parents, that I can offer to students. Where a student can do more of like a self directed study, they can still reach out to me ask me questions, maybe meet not as much, but still meet. A lot of students, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Like kind of a hybrid model. Hybrid model. Because I don't see the business as, all right, I'm fully on automation. You know, I'm making triple what I made before and working, you know, so many hours less. That's not the business I'm in. But because I do love meeting with my students and I make good money doing it and, and, and it works. But I think if I slowly, slowly start incorporating that hybrid model, it will help and it'll start to – I'll see that income tick up and then those hours slowly tick down. It's a process and um, it's trial and error. Uh, and there's part of me that also – you know, I really, really want teachers to make more money. We are one of the most underpaid professions in the world. And there is a way to create a revenue stream to not be underpaid. So my th- my my reason and, and, and kind of my, my goal now is to really just let people know that that you can do this. And I love working with teachers or other professionals that are interested in this and then giving them the tools to to build it. Um, that that's really I, yeah. honestly is probably my number one goal now is 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 letting people know teachers especially, you know, you can really change your life financially and still do something that you love. I love going to school every day. I will be a teacher for my whole career. I absolutely love it. But <laughs> I also want to make more money and this is where it fits in. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's available to people. It, 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 it's out there. Do you see a scenario where you ever bring on subcontractors under the mat umbrella, subcontract tutors to, uh, hey, I'm going to I'm going to go out and get the business because I have this sales background and I've got more, sometimes more leads than I can handle. So I, I could, if I found other tutors that I could trust, like do you ever see yourself going down that path? Yes. I've actually had, when I was in New York, I had uh, tutors that worked underneath me. Um, I take my business so seriously. I am probably way too uh, just anal about who I'm going to hire. <laughs> Um, okay. because, because that's, that's my baby, right? The, the business is my baby. However, though, um, and I think with the advent of the accessibility and the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Everyone is just okay using zoom now, right? It, it, it it's normal, um, or web whatever platform you're yeah. using. I think it's a lot easier now for me or anyone else who's building a business tutoring to reach out to a larger clientele and say, Hey, I see you, you have this business. I have this business. I think if we come together, we can offer something larger or I have, you know, someone who, who has done very well in the SAT is a very good tutor. We vet them great. And then they can start taking on clients for, you know, less money and I'm making less money. But once again, it's, I'm not utilizing that hour for myself. Someone else is. Yeah. Um, I think these are all things that, you know, we are, are, I'm looking at in 2023 to really um, scale up, you know, and, and, and see if I can take it to, to the next level. Um, I think it's a two-part approach. I think it's the, that, that subcontractor, subcontractor approach, because I've really been thinking about that, that hybrid approach, 
and then letting them both kind of organically move and then tweaking and seeing what what works. Um, yeah, service scales in a lot of different ways. It's always the pushback. Well, it's still time for money, but like there are a lot of different levers that you can pull to make that business grow beyond just uh, just yourself if if that's the path that you want to go down. Matt, you mentioned Zoom. Are there any other tools in your toolbox that you swear by that make it easier to uh, run your business, keep everything organized? Yeah. So Zoom number one, um, I utilize for all my clients. Uh, if you have more than one client or you're working for many hours a night, you can sign up with Zoom. I think it's like $15 a month, easily made back. Um, I also use uh, Wacom software. It is a, uh, a this tablet that I use, and it is W-A-C-O-M. And it is the software that Sal Khan uses for Khan Academy, and you're able to draw and mark up PDFs. So for me, I have the test pulled up on the screen and I'm marking off PDFs, doing math problems, showing students how they work. And the kids love it because okay, cool. I can record my pro, I could record the session. I could send it to them. I can create the PDF that we've worked into, send it to them. Talk about other business ideas. I have all the SAT practice tests done, pencil and paper, and I've actually started uh, moving them over onto the digital space where if a student is working into a test, I could say, Hey, for X amount of dollars a month, you can have access to all my practice tests that I finished, uh, via video, um, and also via, um, the software where it's written up. That's th that more hybrid level that I've tried out, uh, to success. Um, so really it's, it's zoom using that. I think the road microphone is super important because when I'm speaking with students, it sounds very professional and, and well-prepared. Um, and then my, my trusty tablet and my okay. computer. All right. Very low, uh, relatively low overhead and not Very a lot low. of, uh, not a lot of, uh, upfront expense there. Um, well, Matt, this has been awesome. Takeaimtutoring.com is the tutor facing site. Is there a student parent facing site? If uh, people want to get in touch from that side, they can just email me from that site, takeaimtutoring.com. They can reach out to me uh, and I will respond back to them as soon as I can. I am very, uh, I like to respond quickly so they can get back to me. Well, very good. Takeaimtutoring.com. Uh, Matt's on Twitter at MattFU12, MattFu12. Let's wrap this thing up with your number one tip for Side Hustle Nation. My number one tip for Side Hustle Nation is enjoy the process. Enjoy the story because growing something on your own and doing something on your own, there is no better feeling than it coming from you, yourself. I love that. It's something, it's something to be proud of. Like, hey, I've, I built this thing. I, you know, I there is started, no I started better from scratch feeling. and made it happen. Absolutely. Well, Matt, once again, uh, thanks for stopping by. I just have a few kind of just as I've been jotting down notes here. Sure. Uh, first was that everything is learnable and you know, the ACT, SAT, ACT is a learnable skill too. And yes. like, you know, you can get good at this good enough to be, you know, one or two steps ahead of your prospective students. If this is a business that appeals to you, uh, I love the call to start with your network and then uh, look, look for these lead fountains, so to there speak, where are the sources of, um, you know, an evergreen flow of potential leads. I'm going to steal um, that one from you lead fountain. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to utilize that. That's great. <laughs> this was from some sales book that I read. Okay. Recently. I forget what it was. It was like, Oh, I like that term. Um, and then you know, one thing we talk a lot about is, uh, piggybacking, piggybacking on the popularity of the tests in this case, but piggybacking on the popularity of other trends, you know, a specific software tool that is rising in popularity, right? Like instead of trying to create demand from scratch, like go where some demand already is. I think this is a good example of that. I think if I could just quickly is the, the, the college counseling business is massive and it's only getting bigger. And if you can jump on that train, there's that, there's that revenue stream right there. That's really going to help you. Um, and in 2024, both tests go virtual. So who is going to be that person out there who's going to jump on that, get good at that, and be you know ahead of that curve? Yeah, I am. <laughs> who's going to be ahead of that curve and calling those people saying, "Hey, this test is going virtual. I've already created this 
platform, this program that I want to work with your student to do that. That's 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 where the people who are really going to make uh, the money in the in the upcoming years. Yeah, the other business idea that I'll throw out. This was from Steve Chu. We did a kind of a business idea giveaway episode a few months ago, and he was mentioning because his you know. He got a little bit of a head start on kids compared to Bryn and I. And so they're looking at some of these college counselor guidance people expenses. And he said it was like 10 or 20 grand a year. And like yes. everybody at the high school, because it's like a, you know, Silicon Valley, like everybody's into it. And he's like, there's got to be a software solution. There's got to be a hybrid model, you know, it's so one to many. Like there's got to be a way to cut this expense down. And so that was another uh, one kind of in the same realm or like kind of he's on the he is on target yeah, he's on the right track he's totally yeah. on the right track because because it's it's it, it is about 10 15 20 000 a kid um so yeah there's something there 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 there's a listener out there right now thinking of you know okay i think i can do this um and and there is a massive um idea there uh and then maybe i'll i'm, I'm gonna try to find it <laughs> we'll see there but, you go maybe uh, that's the I, next think, yeah. chapter of the business that hopefully we'll see. Well, very good. Hopefully this got your creative juices flowing. If you're still stuck for ideas, make sure to download your listener only bonus for this week. It's my list of 101 service business ideas that you can start and then apply some of Matt's same tactics tactics to go out and get customers. You can download that for free at sidehustlenation.com slash tutor, or just follow the show notes link in the episode description of your podcast app. Big thanks to Matt for sharing his insight. Thanks to FreshBooks for sponsoring this week. Now's the time to get your bookkeeping out of the shoebox and into the cloud with the help of our sponsor, FreshBooks. It's the number one invoicing and accounting software for side hustlers, freelancers, service providers everywhere. Side hustle show listeners can hit up freshbooks.com slash side hustle to get 90% off your FreshBooks subscription for your first four months. That is it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of the Side Hustle Show. Hustle on.